Anyway. Hey. Mike's Daily Podcast. Wow, this is crazy doing a daily podcast because it's like every day. Every day. Every day I write the podcast. Mike's Daily Podcast. Or I probably should write the podcast because then it would sound better. It'd sound all constructed, but then I'd be reading, reading, reading everything on a piece of paper to you and it would be very stilted and fake and artificial like most podcasts today. My name's Mike Matthews, yay. It's FF episode 2546, 2546. Mike's Daily Podcast. Here at Cafe Anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley, the last place on earth where we are expecting one more rainstorm. Mike's One more hurrah. Daily And then podcast. we can forget this all happened. Yeah! <laughs> or try to. People don't get it here in California. Outside of California, you're like, what? What? Rain? Why? So I guess there's no rain for the next two hours. That's a good thing. But it's supposed to be tomorrow sometime. 50% chance. Everything's just overflowing. It says, what? Now I'm not seeing any rain. 0% chance. So... I don't know what's happening. Oh, here it is. At 9 o'clock tonight, we've got... Oh, we do have a 66% chance of rain. Is this going to be a big, huge spat of water? Or is this... Uh, I don't know. I'm getting conflicting information from my bank. And anyway, Cafe Anyway. The point is, I've been doing a lot of podcasts lately. From Cafe Anyway, Summer Podcaster Valley. And getting some interesting information. You've been hearing all about the wonderful stuff going on with our president in as far as uh, stuff that uh, he didn't take care of, the documents. But then, you know, it's funny listening to one side criticize. And here's today's podcast picture. When the other side could be criticized just as much. The podcast picture today is myself and the wonderful Rocky the Kitten. Not named after Sylvester Stallone, but because... He was a survivor Like the song by Survivor Eye of the Tiger And he has the Eye of the Tiger And he came from Hayward He was the only cat that survived in his litter So just like someone else who came from Hayward The Rock And he looks like Rocky the Squirrel too This cat So you see the picture at mikesdailypodcast.com And all the past podcast pictures The late great Baz the Boxer we have featured pictures of him as well. So, what is, what's all this st- stuff that you're saying, late great Basil the Boxer, about the debt ceiling and all that? Republicans are pressing to reduce government spending in exchange for raising the debt ceiling. This according to the Daily Wire. In a letter to House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, And when she wrote this, she was yelling, acknowledged that the United States will reach the statutory limit of the debt ceiling this Thursday and warned against failing to raise the debt limit. Wall Street Journal says, so the government will run out of funds sooner than expected because of Mr. Biden's determination to make taxpayers rather than borrowers carry the burden of student debt and because of rising interest rates Resulting from the inflation that the president's spending has exacerbated. This according to the Wall Street Journal. Given that Mr. Biden's fingerprints are all over the new debt deadline, not to mention much of the spending that created the $31 trillion monster, it would be flatly irresponsible of him to reject a negotiation with the Republican House over fiscal restraints. And CBN... News said House Republicans want the Biden administration to agree to major spending cuts before they vote to raise the ceiling, but the White House is refusing to negotiate. I don't like it when people don't negotiate. I didn't like it when the Tea Partiers, back how many years ago, 10 years ago, when they were just like, no, no, we don't want to negotiate with anybody. And then it had, they had to have Mitch, uh, Mitch McConnell had to step in before the government shut down. 
or to stop the government shutdown. I think we had already had the government shut down. Is it time up for TikTok? This podcast is not on TikTok. I am not on TikTok. I will never be on TikTok. That ship sailed long ago before it even began to set sail because I'm over 50. I refuse to be on TikTok. No one over 50 should be on TikTok, period. If you're young, all right, go for it. Have the Chinese break into your phone and steal all your information and make your phone slow down, which it will. Chinese-owned app promises better transparency in order to stay in the U.S. This also from the Wall Street Journal. Two years into negotiations with U.S. regulators about whether TikTok will be able to remain in the country. Remember that if you have a government phone, federal government phone, cell phone, you are banned from having TikTok on that cell phone. I don't know how they are enforcing that ban, but so... U.S. regulators uh, two years into negotiations with them and TikTok. Well, TikTok will be able to remain in the country. The popular video sharing app is trying a new tack. Increased transparency. In recent conversations with Washington lawmakers and civil society organizations, TikTok has revealed details of a complex $1.5 billion plan to reorganize the company's U.S. TikTok. And they are hoping that details of its planned reorganization and promised measures to ensure oversight of its content recommendation algorithms will convince potential allies in Washington of its ability to operate independently of its parent company, which is China-based ByteDance Limited. So they, uh, they have not been approved yet, but that's what they are hoping for. I don't think you should download TikTok. I don't think you should be on TikTok. It it appeals. It plays to the very worst qualities of human nature. If you have OCD, you should stay as far away from TikTok as possible because it plays to that nature. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast. Somewhere in Podcaster Valley, the last place on earth. Anyway... See Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot mired in highly contested re-election campaign and sought help from public school students. What? Several wealthy neighborhoods have turned to private security patrols to address local concerns about crime. Mrs. Ms. Lightfoot's tenure also has been marked by repeated clashes with unions for teachers and police. Contributing to low morale and departures from the police force. Early polling and surveys show her need to fight, her needing to fight to make it into the knockout round, says Wall Street Journal. 14.3% of American population are regularly using illegal, dangerous drugs. 14.3%. That, according to the Washington Times, San Francisco is proposing to give eligible residents who are black $5 million each, plus forgiveness of all debt. This, according to Fox News, San Francisco's Reparations Committee has proposed paying each black longtime resident $5 million, not $5, and granting total debt forgiveness due to the decades of systematic repression Faced by the local black community, San Francisco African American Reparations Advisory Committee, which advises the city on developing a plan for reparations for black residents, released its draft report last month to address reparations not for slavery, since California was not technically a slave state, but, quote, to address the public policies explicitly created to subjugate black people in San Francisco by upholding and expanding the intent and legacy of chattel slavery. That, according to Fox News, I have I owe so much money in reparations because not only am I white, but I so on my mom's side, she's German. So I probably owe a lot of reparations to people from the Jewish community. And then on my dad's side, he, there's a bit of Irish in there. So who knows what the Irish did that I owe reparations to. Probably that if I was British, 
I'd owe reparations to the Irish because wasn't there a lot of that uh, going on where there were the war and violence and I just watched the Dairy Girls so I know all about it and I listen to you too but then let's see wait there was another German on my dad's side oh gosh this isn't looking good but then you know ugh, ugh. And then I'm divorced, so I owe money to somebody else because of the divorce. But there you go. It ain't easy being Mike. What else? Anything else? Oh, repressive Taliban rule face coverings are now required even for mannequins. According to the Associated Press. Under the Taliban, the mannequins in women's dress shops across the Afghan capital of Kabul are a haunting sight. Their heads cloaked in cloth sacks and wrapped in black plastic bags. The hooded mannequins are one symbol of the Taliban's puritanical rule over Afghanistan. Water conservation tactics are being reconsidered after the heavy California rains. You know how upset I get when people say anything. If they, were, if they breathe the word drought. Heck, if you breathe any word that sounds like drought. I get mad. If you say doubt, gout, uh, 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 spout, I don't, no, anything. I don't like it. I got very mad at someone on Fox Weather Channel. Some lady, blonde lady, who was saying, Oh, California, you're still in a drought. It's going to take a lot of years to get out. And meanwhile, water is pouring into my basement. I'm saying, What? There's water everywhere, lady. You have no idea. You're sitting there in your high tower, wherever that high tower is, <laughs> hanging out in the high tower. That was a crazy show. So, hey, capturing waterfall, rainfall rather. Politico said after the driest three years in the state's modern history, California suddenly has a different problem on its hands too much water. An ongoing series of storms drenching the state has forced officials to take measures unfathomable. Fathoms. Fa- when you go underwater, you go several fathoms below the water. See the nice choice of words there. Like now they're having to, in here in California, release excess water from reservoirs and pumping surging river flows into storage. It's also renewing interest in how to better capture rainfall for dry times. This this should not have even been contemplated now. This should have been contemplated 10 years ago. Or when the drought started, whenever that was. I don't know. It seems like it's always been on. Agricultural areas have been long asking for this. And Republicans, particularly in California, have been asking for this. And now, finally, Gavin Newsom is embracing this. Ugh. He just... Finally? Now? Is ridiculous. And that's about... Oh! Wyoming wants to ban electric vehicles. (laughs) What? By 2035? This according to the Daily Mail, Wyoming has introduced state legislation to ban the sale of new electric vehicles by 2035 to ensure the stability of its oil and gas industry. The announcement comes as several states, including New York, California, and Oregon, are doing the opposite. Moving to phase out the sale of new gas-powered vehicles to combat climate change. Which is kind of a bad idea in some ways because we don't have the electric grid to take th- th- this is what I meant the other day when I was talking about how the power outages are caused more by Teslas than by falling trees. We've had a lot of falling trees lately in the Bay Area because we have a lot of eucalyptus trees and their roots are very shallow. And when you got a eucalyptus tree near a creek, it's going to fall over. It's done it many, many times here in Podcastro Valley. So I was saying that Tesla's cause power outages and what I meant by that, I don't think I explained myself clearly, which is a trait of mine. And that is the Tesla's pull so much power from the grid 
And when the grid has been sitting there for 60 odd years and the wire system and whatever is sitting there. And, and I have this confirmed from someone who sells solar power, solar cells, and gets your house all into solar power. I don't know if he's making this up so that I will buy solar power from him. But no, he, he's also, cons- he knows this, the logistics of it. And he said, look, the wire that used to take this much electricity is now set- taking a whole bunch more. It blows transformers and causes havoc. And I had that same situation happen to me a few years ago here in Podcaster Valley. Our neighborhood was out of power for about seven hours. I don't know for sure it was from a Tesla, but I did notice a lot of new Teslas in the area charging in their driveways. So it may have caused that. That's what I meant. Power outages being caused by Teslas. So Wyoming is not going to have that issue. (laughs) But they will be contributing to climate change with all the greenhouse gases that they're releasing. All the old dinosaur boons they're burning. But the Wyoming officials argue that oil and gas production has created countless jobs and contributed revenues to the state of Wyoming throughout its history. The bill also notes that Wyoming lacks charging stations and that the critical minerals used in electric batteries are not easily recyclable or disposable. And that is a truth that I have never heard an electric vehicle user ever defend. That is a truth that is something that will creep up on all of us in the future at some point. Wyoming Wyoming ranked as the eighth top producer of oil in 2021 and hosts 30,000 miles of pipelines operated by 100 companies that maintain 68,000 jobs in the industry. Fascinating. One last thing here. Um, I don't know if you work in radio. I don't know if you do a podcast. I don't know because you can't really talk to me, can you? I mean, you can. You can call me at 336-MM-DAILY. That's 3 plus 3 equals 6. MM is in Mike Matthews. Daily as in what this podcast has been for a couple of days. Sometimes I get interrupted. Call now. 336-MM-DAILY. But here is how people act when they call a radio station. Now, or write to a radio station. Now, I used to run... A show The Santa Fe Cafe Which inspired this show Mike's Daily Podcast And Cafe Anyway And all of that And I used to get calls Every night People would call in To request songs Because back then You didn't have cool things Like Spotify Which you can hear this Podcast on Spotify And say I want to hear this song Or go to YouTube And you can Listen to the show On YouTube they would have to call me and request a song. And then I would usually run into problems like my boss would say, no, we can't play that song. It's not popular. Or some other roadblock would hit me. But, and then I have to explain to the caller or not tell them. or I, It just was a lot of human interaction. Now radio stations don't get quite as many calls as they used to. People will write and email the station. And when they do that, they feel a little emboldened. And they can be a little bit rude. And this one person was complaining. They sent this to a radio station and said, I'm sure you get this all the time, but some of your commercials are twice as loud as your content. It would seem someone is not doing their job correctly or no one cares. Let me just read that last sentence again. It would seem someone is not doing their job correctly, which they spelled their wrong. I comes after the E, idiot. Or no one cares. That is... Why why just say, you know, hey, guys, I'm listening to your station on the stream. Your your station's streaming over the internet. And your commercials are way louder than the content. and, And isn't that interesting now how the word content... We never use the word content. Now content is everywhere. What I'm doing now is content. Uh, What I do, I'm a content creator. Content, you know what? This guy is not content. So he wrote in and he was rude. Why would you say it would seem someone is not doing their job correctly or no one cares? Why would you even add that tag? Is that supposed to be funny? 
Is that supposed to be amusing? Do I amuse you? Just, I just find that is asinine. Completely asinine. Write, don't be emboldened to be rude when you write on the internet or write in an email to someone. What, what is, what, why? Uh, Let's see. Finally, (laughs) this little bit. I had to say that. I'm not going to say what station that was directed towards, but because actually I don't even know. But somebody wrote that to a station. Okay. Somebody wrote this little opinion piece. I'd like to read it to you. Perhaps Joe Biden's big mistake was announcing he'd run for re-election because that's when all his trouble started. Think about it. Apparently, he's had all kinds of classified documents stashed all over for six years. No, okay, stop. Not stashed all over. Stashed in two places. Last I heard. Two places on the other side of the political spectrum. The other party who had a bunch of a bunch of stuff stashed at his place. So, okay, For six years. Yet none of us knew about it. He didn't even know about it. Okay, that's not good. But. That happened only after Democrats outperformed in the midterms and Joe Biden then decided he hadn't passed his expiration date after all. Okay. That, the fact, if, that, if this information would have come out, the fact that the former president picked some of the worst candidates in the history of the world, you don't think that wouldn't have caused the midterms to still fall in Joe Biden's camp? They, they're coming up with every excuse. Oh, and wasn't the midterms fixed by the cabal in Silicon Valley, that group of really small techies that decided to sway the election whichever way they wanted, like they did in 2020. This person goes on to say, the problem is that many in his own party don't agree. They see Biden's frequent confusion growing worse. They realize he might not have won in 2020 had he not been able to campaign from his basement. Okay, this person is sour grapes all over. Okay, I thought the fact that he won was because of the cabal in Silicon Valley. So why do you care he was in a basement? He was, he was not trying to get COVID. Because back then, when you got COVID, there weren't vaccines. You got really, really sick. I got COVID a couple weeks back. I got sick and it was uncomfortable and I didn't like it. But it would have been 20 times worse had I not been vaccinated. Now, I'm still a little bit congested in my left ear. I still have, like, it. I have to tilt my head a certain way and then I can actually hear out of it. It's sort of like a swimmer's ear thing. But I don't really hear fluid in there. It just kind of clogged. But it's getting better every day. That was the worst part of this whole COVID thing. Would I have wanted it any worse? No. I probably would have no hearing in that ear at all had I not had the vaccination. So what is my point is that he had to stay in that basement to not get COVID, which as you remember, our president at the time, Donald J. Trump did get COVID and he got really sick by all accounts. They won't give us all accounts. They're hiding the information. Maybe Biden's lawyers are hiding the real information about this. And Hunter's laptop and all that other stuff. But the point is COVID was nasty. And that Biden was trying to hide from it. And people didn't want to go to election centers and go to massive spreaders, super spreading places. They wanted to vote from home. And that's how and Biden won. But the big problem, and they could have voted for Biden who was hiding in his basement or voted for the other guy who was sick with COVID and infecting everyone around him. But the biggest problem, this person goes on to say, is that by running for re-election, Biden is blocking the rise of a new generation of Democrats. Oh, so this person wants the Democrats to bring out the Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's and the other people that are younger than the Biden. Joe Biden was a compromise candidate from the start. So even a compromise candidate beat Trump. Interesting. 
Democrats rallied around him out of necessity. If he is no longer useful, they'll move him aside for the same reason. Okay. Don't know where that was going. Thank you, person who wrote that article. Basically ending that by saying, Democrats are going to get rid of Biden and find someone that will work. Right. As they should. As you guys should have a long time ago. Republicans should have replaced Trump long ago. Why do they keep and and apologize for everything he's done? The uh, con- constant... I, I would not be able to do... Look, I'm not going to do pre- any... I'm not going to turn myself into a pretzel for any candidate, for any politician. That was just a ridiculous. And that's a very smart person who wrote that. But just that, that whole apologizing for someone who ego was so big. I could be talking about either president, by the way. Um, you know, it's just ridiculous. Why do we, we should not do that and find someone who is uh, good, a good candidate Vote for me. No, don't do that. Look who's here outside a cafe anyway. Perhaps you want to vote for this person. Hello, my guys. This is Shelly Stewart, gift shop supervisor. So is the next storm going to be really, really bad? Ah, uh, I can't really tell at this point. We'll, so we'll hope for the best. But once it's gone, it's gone. We're done. Thank goodness, Mike Matthew. All my snow globes are getting wet. Well, isn't the inside of a snow globe wet anyway? Yeah, okay, whatever. Well... Food for thought. Look who else is here. Oh, Mike, this is Floyd the Floor Man. And this is John Deere, the engineer, Mike. Yeah, I hope we don't get any lightning and thunder because that could strike cafe anyway and cause us to lose our podcast connection. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. And if we lose our podcast connection, we might get an angry email from some someone saying, nobody cares over there. Am I the only one that cares? You guys should do your job because you don't like your job. You should do your job because you don't do it in your... uh, uh. Get a life. Next show, it'll be the wonderful Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, and the brewmaster. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.